Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I would like to look at intermodulation distortion and the effects of measuring either indoors or outdoors. So to start off, um, this became something that I was curious about. And so I decided to do a test setup measurement where I measured my ES290 by radio horn and did a 10 band test signal at various SPL and conducted the exact same test setup outside and then observed the results in terms of intermodulation distortion. And my goal was to see if the indoor environment was somehow affecting or masking the performance with this particular measurement. And so what I wanted to do as well was look at potential sources of noise relating to having the microphone at a larger physical distance from the loudspeaker. And that becomes a concern when you're having to measure larger speakers and your microphone has to be of sufficient distance to capture all potential sources of noise from the loudspeaker itself. Um, for example, um, with a horn, you have edge diffraction artifacts, or with a large loudspeaker front baffle, you have edge diffraction, or with a low frequency driver, even there's uh, noise generated by the surround. And so you simply don't want to place the microphone on the dust cap. You'd want to have it so that the potential sources of sound are pretty much equal distance to the microphone, and so you're not simply um, masking or omitting those sounds by having the mic too far away from those noise sources. And so just a reminder, my testing uh, typically is always looking at loudspeaker performance. And so the context of these measurements are with regard to that in the sense that we're looking at the best methods and test setups to measure loudspeaker performance. And so this is a DIY speaker building channel. And so I felt it very re relevant to look at potential sources of issue with measurement indoors when it comes to intermodulation distortion measurements. So I should also point out as well that you cannot simply use FFT to gate out the response um, and, and this gate out the reflections in the room since the IMD measurement uses a continuous tone uh, for its evaluation. So uh, let's get started. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to do was to look at the ambient noise in both environments. And so you can see here I have a side-by-side -side comparison between the indoor and the outdoor. And so we have 103 dB noise level uh, indoor and you have various noise sources in my room. Uh, this is with no test tone playing and you can see maybe there might be computer noise, HVAC noise, or maybe power supply noise, things that you need to be aware of. But it is showing that we're a full 103 dB down, which is enough uh, for a loudspeaker test. And so when we move outdoors, we can see again that the noise, we gain another 10 dB of uh, lower noise in comparison to the indoor. And so we also have uh, noises associated with outdoors, whether it be traffic. In my case, I don't have any traffic, but I do have plenty of birds and uh, things that I need to be aware of. They were certainly showing up uh, in, the, in the live spectro spectrograph. Uh, when I was doing the test. And so when I when I did the test, I did a full set of measurements indoors, and then I moved the horn and microphone outdoors, uh, leading the wires through a window, and left my computer and amplifier indoors. Everything was set up exactly the same. So there wasn't a risk of uh, inadvertently changing the levels or, or anything like that. So, okay. So let's look at the actual test results. And so I'm using a 10 band multi-tone signal. And so you can see the tones from 150 hertz up to one kilohertz. And the noise generated in my room was at minus 47 dB. And this was at 90 dB SPL at one meter. However, when we do a direct comparison to the exact same test outdoors, we're seeing that the noise is significantly lower, minus 65 dB. So this is very uh, significant finding. If we increase the SPL, 
we see that things improve somewhat, but still we're left with a distinct difference between the two tests. Indoors has a higher noise level. So increasing the SPL from 95 to 100 dB, we see things start to improve. So the noise level then becomes minus 50 dB uh, for indoors and the exact same for the outdoors. So here we're finding that in order to get a good IMD test, we're having to have the test SPL at at least 100 dB at one meter. Raising it again from 100 to 105 dB, we see the same result both indoor and outdoor. And then I've boxed in this area here, and, you, and it's just simply to point out that uh, the noise artifacts are very similar between the two tests. So I'm going to go back to the previous graph just for um, to highlight what exactly we can conclude from these tests. So um, the fact that there is a difference between the indoor and the outdoor, we can conclude that these are artifacts related to the room itself, since that's the only difference between the two tests. And I think it would be safe to assume that these are, in fact, room reflections that we're seeing um, starting to contaminate our, the quality of our measurement. And so uh, also worth noting, too, is that the noise, if it is, in fact, room reflections, have to be different in frequency from our test tones. So what, what I'm finding is that the uh, room reflection tones or sound is changing in frequency uh, compared to the frequencies that I'm using in my test tone. So that's something that I find is pretty significant. So one could reasonably presume that the room reflections cannot be a different frequency from the the noise source. Well, this simply is not the case. It appears as though the reflections in the room are uh, changing in frequency. So certainly an interesting um, finding. So um, going from there, I just wanted to touch on um, maybe from a test setup, it appears as though if you're um, going to measure IMD indoors, I think it would be worth confirming that the uh, noise artifacts related to the room are sufficiently low. So that may mean increasing the SPL to a, a sufficient level. And in my test case, it was the 100 dB SPL level that was required. Um, and also, you may want to look at your mic distance from the loudspeaker itself. Another thing I wanted to discuss was from my previous blog, I looked at the musical um, spectral content in Paul Horn's album where he plays the bass flute in the Taj Mahal. And so in this chart, I've just shown the, the spectral content. And so this is a spectrogram created in FUBAR and the horizontal line is the horizontal in this graph is time and then the vertical is frequency and so you can see these uh, horizontal bars are the fundamental harmonics from Paul Horn's bass flute and then the light textured areas in between the harmonics um, are uh, what I would conclude as part of the music and I would go even further to say that it is the spatial information relating relating to the venue where he's playing his instrument and how can I conclude that well if you look at the test that I've just completed let's let me go back to the uh, the noise artifacts that we observed so if we look at the, the difference between the indoor and outdoor the noise here can only be the effects of the room and I know that if uh, a musical instrument is played in a venue, a, a, a part of why that musical recording is so beautiful is because of the natural reflections and overtones uh, in that in that environment. And so, what can what what what's my point? My point is that they're not simply random noises that is just um, unrelated to the music. It is the music and so in regards to IMD testing 
Um, I'm referring to it as noise. However, in a musical recording context, it's part of the recording and you simply can't dismiss it as unimportant. Um, and I've shown in the previous video that the actual level, as far as it being low level detail, the actual level is right around the intermodulation distortion levels that I was measuring with the various drivers. And so it does correlate with our own experiences in the sense that we get a new pair of speakers. They're supposed to be amazing. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Um, we often look at a speaker's ability to extract that detail in the recording. And some speakers are really amazing at that. Some speakers aren't. And so that's what I'm finding with my own measurements is that some speakers measure well, some don't. And so it just further um, adds to the possibility that intermodulation distortion is actually a very good metric for determining the overall uh, sound quality of a loudspeaker in terms of its low level detail retrieval capability. So that concludes this video. Uh, I will certainly be continuing to investigate uh, IMD as a topic. Take care and have a great day.